this is Dr. Karthik Natarajan. I am a consultant pain physician from Synapse Pain and Spine Clinic in Chennai, India. Today we are going to discuss about how to take care of your spine and how to protect your back from injuries. A majority of back pains that we see in the clinic are among common office goers. These are people who have a sedentary lifestyle. They go to office and sit for long hours and these patients have a back pain. So how to protect this group of patients who have back pain? How to take care of your spine? Now the first things we tell patients when patients have back pain that they should be careful about is how to lift objects from the floor. Now normally what we do is if there is something heavy on the floor we want to, we are going to stand straight bend our backs go down and pick up stuff from the ground and then straighten up now when you bend forward and lift weights it can put a lot of strain on the back it could be trivial objects it could be heavy objects it could be buckets of water it could be kitchen work so how to protect yourself when you have to lift something heavy is we encourage patients to keep their back straight, bend the knees instead of the back, go down, pick up the object that you want to pick up, bring it as close to the body as possible and then straighten up. So essentially, instead of bending the back, we are encouraging patients to bend the knees, keeping the back straight, go down, pick up the object and straighten up. This is one way of protecting your back from having injuries when you bend forward and lift weights. The second thing that you do is when you commute to the uh, workplace or when you're going outside. Now what happens is sometimes the roads in this part of India or this part of the world can be very bad. So if you're having long jerky travel either in your car or in your two-wheeler or in your auto, it can have an impact on the lower lumbar spine. So generally we want to use a mode of transportation which is reasonably not very jerky. So the car, bus, train, plane is okay. Patients with back pain, it's not ideal that you use too much of two-wheeler or three-wheeler travel. Now what happens when you use a jerky travel is each time the vehicle goes in a speed breaker or in a ditch it's going to affect the lower lumbar spine and this can have a lot of problems. So if as a patient who has back pain, you yourself will realize that when you go very fast in a speed breaker or in a ditch, you do have a bit of discomfort in the back pain. Second thing is, uh, a lot of office goers tend to sit for seven, eight, nine hours continuously in the office. Now what we encourage uh, people to do to have a healthy spine is make sure you have a reasonably good chair at your office place. We call this chair as an ergonomic chair. Now what does this ergonomic chair essentially have? So we want all of you to have a good back support in the place where you are working. The good back support means that your lower back is touching the support at all times. So if your chair is not good, it may not be a bad idea that you just get a lumbar support that will protect your back. We don't want you sitting in the tip of the chair and leaning back, which we call as slouching. And also it's a good idea that you have an armrest. And if you are using a monitor, which majority of us do, make sure the monitor is at the correct level and at the correct height. And you don't essentially have to twist your body and neck to see these monitors. If you have, if you think your foot is not reaching the floor, it may not be a bad idea that you have a footrest as well. A footrest of about three to four inches is a good idea to support your back. If you are going to use the mouse a long time, it is a good idea that you rest your wrist and then hold the mouse instead of keeping your hand in the air. Whenever People have to work for seven, eight, nine hours together continuously. It is also essential that you take very frequent breaks. So every half an hour, 45 minutes, try to get up from your chair, walk around the office, get some water, stretch yourself. 
So sitting continuously in your workplace is not ideal again. Next we want to know what is the ideal body weight. Now by definition ideal body weight is height in centimeters minus 100. So if a patient is let's say 170 centimeters, 170 minus 100, so 70 kilos is the ideal body weight. Now patients or people who are slightly more on the heavier side will have more strain on the back so they have to the, the spine has to carry the entire weight so it can put a little bit of more strain on the back so for an average indian male patient we suggest a weight of around 70 kilos for the ladies about 60 kilos is a good height now patients who are slightly heavier we encourage them to have gentle physical activity so people who are having back pain the gentle activity that we encourage are regular walking so if you are not started walking it may be a good idea that you start physical activity get a good pair of shoes start walking at 20 minutes per day then gradually lift increase this to 30 40 minutes per day so 40 minutes per day of walking is a good physical activity Along with that, if elderly patients also get a bit of sunlight, it is even better because the sunlight is going to give vitamin D. So calcium and vitamin D are essential for having bone strength. So patients over 60 years of age sometimes have the problem called osteoporosis where the bone density is lost. So calcium and vitamin D3 are essential. So it's good that you take your milk, your curd, and vegetables for calcium and get a bit of sunlight for getting vitamin D3. Along with walking, the other physical activity that we encourage are uh, things like yoga. So yoga is fantastic for flexibility, but at the same time, make sure if you're doing yoga, the yoga trainer knows if you have a back pain and so they'll teach you accordingly. If you are doing yoga, the general dictum is if there is a particular posture in yoga which is causing any pain in any part of the body you should not be doing it so a little bit careful on that count swimming is fantastic if you have access to a swimming pool swimming is probably the best exercise that anybody can do for maintaining physical activity patients with neck and back pain carefully can start swimming uh, swimming is something that we call as hydrotherapy or aqua therapy so swimming uh, not only puts it's much more effective than walking but it also strengthens the surrounding muscles around the spine sports wise patients with back pain are encouraged to have gentle sports badminton shuttlecock is a good game that you can try so these are the physical activities walking swimming yoga and badminton uh, water how much water to drink so it's a good idea that you drink about 2 to 2.5 liters of water for a healthy body and a healthy spine. So we encourage patients to drink at least eight, glass, eight large glasses of water every day. This could be in the form of plain water, this could be in the form of juices, it could be in the form of coffee or tea. So we want patients to drink at least two liters of water every day to have a healthy spine. If you are one of those people who are smoking, smoking can cause a lot of uh, side effects. It can have a lot of adverse effects on a lot of things, including your lungs. It can affect the heart. It affects the stomach and other organs. The smoking also affects the spine. The spine is one of those structures which does not have too much blood supply. If patients are continuously smoking, what happens is these blood sub the blood vessels that supply the spine become a little small. So the blood supply becomes compromised. So smoking is something that would adversely affect your back as well. The next thing is what sort of bed mattress to use. A lot of back pain patients come to the doctor and say uh, when they sleep or when they lie down the back pain becomes worse. Now what happens is if you are using a mattress which is very soft that is when you lie down in the mattress you are sinking into the mattress and it is going to affect the back then it's not a good thing. So we encourage patients to have either a firm or a hard mattress. We don't want a bed mattress which is very soft. 
so it's a good idea before you buy your bed mattress that you actually go to the shop lie down on the mattress before you buy it make sure you're comfortable lying on the floor for the back pain is not mandatory so patients we commonly see patients who say i have a back pain so i've been lying down on the floor for two years three years that is not mandatory it is okay of course if you're lying down on the floor it is fine but it is not mandatory a reasonably firm or hard bed mattress is not is something that we want we don't want you like we don't want you sinking into the bed mattress that you use along with that uh, it is also a good idea that you use a reasonably small pillow so the ideal pillow height is about three to four inches high a big pillow or people who use two pillows sometimes end up with uh, neck strains so and also a lot of patients we find that they are lying down on their pillow after lying down they tend to read books they tend to watch tv they look at their mobile texting and stuff now what happens is when you do these activities after lying down you are flexing your neck some more some patients i know lie down face down and then they do the texting so this is not ideal if you are doing any of these activities before you go to sleep that's like reading watching tv or looking at the mobile do all of this in the sitting posture finish your work and then lie down and go to sleep and lastly uh, wearing lumbar supports or belts for back pain this is very common some of these patients see that other patients are wearing lumbar sac lumbosacral supports or belts for lower back pain and very often we find patients who are having belts for years together and uh, they think they are having back pain and the belt is helping them now this is not a good idea because whenever patients wear belts for continuous use what's the what the belt will do is the the spine is not a single bone there are multiple bones in the spine and the the spine stays straight because the surrounding muscles and ligaments are holding the spine very strongly now if you were to put a belt around the back the surrounding muscles and ligaments will not work so just like compared to the right hand which is the dominant hand the left hand is a little bit weaker there's not much muscle compared to the right hand and the left hand why because we don't use the left hand similarly if you continuously wear belts the muscles and ligaments that support the spine will progressively become weaker and in the long run this becomes counterproductive so essentially the belt is not something unless your doctor has advised you to wear a belt you have specific indications for belt somebody with general back pain somebody with a mild disc herniation should not be using continuous belts throughout the day maximum you can use the belt is for half an hour to one hour in a day so generally patients with back pain if at all you are using a lumbosacral support or a lumbar belt you should use it when you are traveling when you are going in the bus if at all there is an unavoidable travel journey where it's very jerky only during that time you should be wearing the belt regular use of belt is not advised so to sum it up i essentially told a few things that will protect your back so to protect your spine the things that we want you to be careful about is bending forward and lifting weight you have to be a little bit, bit careful so i told you instead of bending the backs if you have to lift something from the ground use your knees second is the bed mattress that you use should be reasonably firm third is um, drink adequate amount of water the physical activity that i suggested are walking with good shoes shuttlecock swimming yoga that sort of exercises if you are smoking it's a good idea that you quit smoking use a reasonably firm bed mattress at home not too soft with a medium size pillow at office if you are working make sure you have a good lumbar support which supports your back throughout if you are working for 7 8 hours make sure your lower back is touching the back support at all times the monitor is at the correct level by any chance if you are one of those people who use the lumbosacral support which is a belt it is not a good idea unless you are orthopedic surgeon or a pain physician or a spine surgeon has 
recommended using the belt don't use lumbar belts continuously i hope you have a healthy spine and i hope this video helped you protect your back thank you